How's it going? So in the previous video, we got our game to play some sounds and it basically worked, but I teased that there must be a more elegant way of handling this. So in this video, I'm going to present the message queue or observer pattern, which is what it sounds like. It's just a more elegant way of doing the same thing. The basic model is that each one of these things, you know, model, view, the main, even the main um, function itself, have some behavior where they can observe messages on a queue and they can publish messages on other queues, so queues of other systems. So in here, in this main function, when I go and play this sound, like you can see here, we're sort of mixing behavior together and it gets a little tricky. First up, it looks bad to me. This looks bad. Um, but secondly, it gets a little trickier to determine whether we should actually actually be playing these sounds. So I've teased this enough. Let's get in and do the actual thing. So I'll just make a folder and this folder will be called common. And in here, I'm going to define basically my message stuff. So inside common, I'll go ahead and make my module descriptor. And then I'll go ahead and add my source file. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to use an enum to describe messages and all the different messages we can have. So we'll have a public enum named message. And there are three types of messages. One is a message to drop a piece. Then we have a message to perform a move and a message to undo a move. And I'm going to incorporate data about which row and column we're going to be dropping the piece at. Should we use that? So we're going to have an unsigned size parameter for both the row and column. Next up, I'm going to have a struct which describes all the basic behavior for what we would want a system to have. That is basically the ability to have a message queue and to publish to a message queue or a number of them. So I'm going to construct a public struct named system. And the fields there, we're going to have a message queue. And this is yeah, vector of messages. And then we're going to have observers. Now, there's a bit of a funky thing going on here, and I'll just cut straight to the chase. I've had a lot of trouble with this observers thing. I essentially want it to be a vector of message queues, so a vector of vectors of messages. But the Rust borrow checker has fought me at every corner, and I'll just go ahead, and this is the solution that I came up with. So have a vector containing mutable or pointers to mutable vectors of messages. For whatever reason, pointers, the borrow checker just checks them less, basically. So now for the implementation block of the system. Well, of course, we're going to have a constructor. So public function, just like that. And we'll go ahead and return a system. Just like that. Now, I just noticed that IntelliSense is not working on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down to the main. And I'm just going to import this, basically. And that will force IntelliSense to start looking at the code. So I'll we'll have mod common and then use and I'll use both of these so I'll use message and system and now we can see oh yeah great cool 
The next function is I'm going to have a function to add an observer to the system. So I have public function add observer. And of course, we're going to need to take a mutable reference to ourself. And we're going to have this observer that will bring in. So that will be a pointer to a mutable message queue, basically. OK, so what we can do is we can take our observers and push on that new observer. OK, so um, this is adding an observer. We could add a function to clear all the observers. And that would be just as simple as using the clear function. Um, but because I'm not using this in my example and I don't like compiler warnings, I won't do that just yet but it would be trivial to implement. The bit which is not trivial is publishing a message. So have a public function publish. What we're going to do is basically we're going to look through all of our observers, all of our message queues, and push the given message onto each of them. So I'll say, just start looking through. And I want to do something like this. I want to go get self, get the ith observer, and then push on the message. But this gives an error. And it gives an error because it's saying that we've got a mutable pointer. So point is the issue here. So what we could do is we could dereference. But then it says, hey, hold on. That's unsafe. So we say, OK, Rust, I get it. I'm going to play your game. You're darn right it's unsafe. Right, <laughs> but it's still complaining. And what it's complaining about is that we need to implement the copy and clone traits. So I can go up to that enum and just specify I'm going to implement copy and clone and now that's all fine let me go to the game and i'll use this so the thing in rust is rust has structs it does not have inheritance really but what we can do to get around that is we can do composition so we can get the game and we can give the game some notion we'll give it some extra struct which is the system bit This is a little funky because typically we've been using mod and we've been going like mod common use common, but because modern uh, sorry model and common are sort of at an equal level on the tree, we have to sort of jump out and then back in. So we can think of this as this system field is encapsulating the system like behavior of that game state. So if we want the bit of the game state which acts like a system, we can access that system field. But anyway, we'll have to go ahead and make a new one just like that. And that should be fine. And now I'm going to take this handle click and actually sort of break it out into its own sort of, I'm, I'm not going to access it directly. I will have a public function named update. And this update function will look through the messages. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we're looking through, we're fetching the messages one at a time, and then we're going to act appropriately. So I'll have a match pattern based on the message that we're seeing. So in the case where we're seeing the drop piece, we take that info and we handle click just like that. In the case where we see do move, then we redo the action. And in the case where we have undo move, then we undo the action. 
and there we have it. Okay, so the next thing is I'm going to make an audio system. So this will take a little bit of time and it'll be pretty similar to stuff we've seen before. So I'll just go through the standard, the standard stuff. Okay, so in addition to this stuff, I'm also gonna need some audio stuff. So I'll use SDL2 mixer and I'm also going to use a hash map because I'm going to have an association to an audio chunk for any given message type. Well, not any given message type. Um, anyway, I'll use hash map. And as you can see, again, it's not auto-completing, but I can get around that just by including it. Awesome, so I'm gonna have a struct named an audio system. And it's gonna have three things. It's gonna have the system interface. It's also gonna have that audio channel to play things. And finally, it's gonna have a set of loaded chunks. That will be a hash map with a key type of message and a value type of chunk. Okay, so just, I'll just go back to the main and use that audio system. Okay, so far so good. So then I'll come to the implementation block and we'll have the constructor. And I'll just go ahead and um, set up these fields. Just go back and grab this stuff. Okay, cool. So we initialize the audio, we set up that channel variable, and then I'm going to construct chunks. Again, I'll specify that that is a hash map. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So then I'm just going to insert these. So I'll say, alrighty, chunks, insert. Now the key type will be message to move. Now we get an error and the error says that like, how can we take that enum, that message and use it as a key we need to be able to check for equality. We need to be able to turn it into a hash. And it gives us a suggestion here, which says uh, include the equality hash and partial equality. Okay, no problem. So we'll just go back to common. And then up here, in addition, we'll have equality hash and partial equality. Then if we go back to audio, Okay, now it says, hey, this is a result. Now you would have seen before that I had this question mark here and it didn't like that. So the other thing is I'll just, and then I'll do the same thing. Great. And then finally, because all of these variables have the same name as the field, we can just put them in like that. I think. Oh my goodness. How did I miss this? Okay, we actually need to call. Okay. The Rust dance, which basically translates to this should work. Why does it not work? Again, we're going to need to update the audio system. So we'll add in that public update function. And then just like before, we'll step through the messages. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna check whether that message is playable as an audio chunk. So I'll say if we basically don't have it. So Um, so, having done that, 
we can then play. So we go mixer, panel, play. We we'll have the channel we're playing on the chunk that we're after, which is there. And then for the loops, one. Uh, and then something I forgot to do is just to clear out the message queue. We need to do that for the game as well. So now I'm going to get these pieces working together. Alrighty, so go ahead. We've made the game state and then I'll make the audio system. Cool. And then I will hook these things up to each other. Oh, there's one more thing that I'll need. Um, I'm going to need a system for the main function as well. Now let's hook this up. So my system will pass messages to the game system. So we'll add an observer to it, which will be, yeah, the message queue of the game state. And then the game state will pass messages to the audio system. So we'll take the game states system, add an observer, and that will be. So now if the main function publishes messages, they go directly to the game state. And if the game state publishes messages, they go directly to the audio state. So now we don't need any of this play stuff. So for the do and redo, the game will be publishing its own messages. And here I'll just publish the drop piece message with the given row and column. Right, yeah, we need to, yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself. I was about to run this right now, but if we run this right now, nothing will happen. So in our event loop, we will take the game state and tell it to update. And then we'll take the audio system. Okay, and what's audio saying? Uh, right. I think that just wants me to unwrap these values. Again, the rust dance. This is a little unsatisfying because the goal will be exactly the same as we had before, but we'll have the satisfaction of knowing we did it properly. Okay. Hmm. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Oh my goodness. Okay, my bad. Um, let me just go back to the game because we're not we're not publishing events. So down here where we handle the click, we get down here and. We've done it basically, um, and we'll go. Okay, now let's give that a go. Nice. Cool. Okay, so I'll leave that there. Listen, I know this was a, oh my goodness. I know this was a bit of a long one, but we got there in the end. And like I said, we have the satisfaction that we're doing it properly. Okay, so that'll be it for now. All the best and have fun. Bye.